Tunda Opadevis uh, uh, to present today. He's a professor of English, uh, Digital Cultures and Discourse Studies at the University of Lagos in Nigeria. He earned a doctorate degree from the University of Lagos and he's been teaching and conducting research uh, at the same universities for, for over 20 years. He's won a number of visiting fellowships and scholarships, including the Commonwealth Professional Fellowship at the University of Westminster, London, the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation's uh, Georg Forst Forster's Fellowship for Experienced Researchers at Chemnitz University of Technology in Germany, a DAAD Scholarship for, uh, for the University of Leipzig Summer Program in Digital Humanities, and the Visiting Research Fellowship at the Institute for Advanced Studies in the Humanities uh, at the University of Edinburgh in the, in the UK. He's also presented uh, research papers at uh, a range of international conferences, workshops and some seminars, uh, including Canada, USA, UK, France, Germany, Portugal, Australia, Qatar. And his public service experience includes working as a senior special assistant to the governor of Lagos State, Nigeria, where he headed the Directorate of Speech Duties in the office of the governor. He's also a member of the Governing Council of uh, Anchor University in Lagos. And he's also, the, he's very busy, uh, the convener of the Lagos Summer School in Digital Humanities. That was actually held, I think, last week. Um, but very successful, very interesting. And his ongoing digital humanities projects include the construction of a digital repository of online political discourse in Nigeria, sponsored by the federal government funding agency uh, TET Fund or TTFUND in Nigeria. Uh, he's published uh, on topics related to digital humanities and the use of technologies to analyze social media discourse and remote teaching and learning. He's the co-editor of a volume on the discourse of digital civic engagement, perspectives from the developing world. He's also the founder and director and principal investigator at the Center for Digital Humanities at the University of Lagos and founding president of the Digital Humanities Association of Nigeria. So that was really a mouthful. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have you here and I'm very much looking forward to your presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen now, and then hopefully uh, you can share your screen, uh, Poftende. Mm. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Thank you, Manu. Am I, am I set now? Yep, you're definitely set. I, I, oh, if great. you can share your screen. <laughs> okay, oh, thank okay. You. You, can't see my, you can't see my screen? Can you see my screen? I can't see your screen yet. Oh, okay. Let me go, let me go back then and then try to share the screen. Um, sometimes this can be- Yeah, we practiced this beforehand, but you'll always see that during a presentation, it doesn't work. Let's hope if we can get this to work. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. Let me see. Uh, I don't know why it's not it's not sharing now, but I'm, I have it on my on my desktop. Is it is it? Can you see it now? Can you see my screen now? No, I can't see it yet. Not yet. Uh, what happened? What did I, what did I pray? Um, what I would do? Um, um, I don't know. Let me go back to the. But I I. I I shared it before the before the before we started. I'm yeah. surprised that it's not it's not coming on now. Um, okay, let me go back to. Sorry, I need to re, let me re-enter now and then see. Um, let me re-enter and see. Okay, now I should be ready to share my screen now. Can we see the screen now? Yes, I can see your screen now. Okay. Are we okay now? Yes, this looks good. Okay, fine. Um, well, let, let me let me first of all thank uh, Manu for for the invitation to 
uh, actually uh, speak on, on this topic or speak to this topic as we know we, we used to see. Um, I want to thank you because um, we, we started this relationship just a couple of months or ago, and then uh, and see how we've been able to move forward uh, with, with our collaboration and partnership. I, I think this is exactly the, the, the value and the virtue of DH, uh, building network, uh, building collaboration. And I want to thank you, uh, Menno, for also uh, coming to speak at our event last week. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, it was, it was a, a, a huge success. Uh, we had uh, participants from six African countries that came in in person. And then we, we had over uh, 70 participants uh, in Lagos, uh, apart from several others who are also, um, you know, uh, watching and monitoring and following uh, online. So it is my pleasure uh, to join you this morning at your colloquium uh, to share a few thoughts with you uh, about DH in Africa, and then the challenges that we are confronting and then how we can overcome these challenges and then how we can build uh, a more solid network uh, among all the um, scholars across Africa. Uh, so I will be talk, speaking to the topic, Digital Humanities and African Scholarship, uh, exploring opportunities, embracing challenges. Um, so basically um, you, you see the, the abstract uh, is just talking about the fact that as African scholars or scholars in Africa, we have no choice but to connect with the ongoing revolution in uh, digital technology all over the world. Uh, of course, um, digital technologies um, are really, really improving, improving things. Uh, in the last 20, 25 years, this technology has changed the human society and the humanities as well. But the question is how much, by how much? The question also is that, is the digital revolution transforming humanities intellectually and practically? Are we going beyond the theoretical basis, the theoretical aspect of it? Are we applying and coming up with, with projects? Uh, and that's why I must, I must really commend uh, Sadila for uh, really, really leading the way in, 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 in developing uh, technology that can actually digitize and be applied to uh, language, language, um, you know, transformation and, and several other projects. And then uh, Meno just share with us uh, the mentorship program, the escalator program, uh, which he also uh, discussed at our summer school. Um, we really appreciate and commend your effort. Now, what are we doing as scholars in Africa? Are we asking new research question? Are we just satisfied with new tools? Um, of course, we understand that um, working within this space will require a new new skill sets. Okay, that that will think that will make us to to think outside the box. So we it, it's, it's something that we have to begin to think very critically about. Uh, this morning, I will just I will just focus my presentation on three things, three areas: principles of DH, practice of DH. And project in DH, and I will I will I will um, illustrate with a few projects that we are trying to run here in Lagos, and how far we have been able to uh, actually move and expand the scope of DH in Africa. Um, for those who are just coming, since we have um, uh, some some mentees here, uh, we are just getting into this field. It may be necessary to, to provide some conceptual clarification. Okay, digital humanities is a very broad, broad area of, of study and research. Okay, basically it talks about uh, the use of computer methodology, uh, tech, digital technologies to investigate and analyze language and literary phenomena, as well as research in other areas of the humanities. Whatever your background in the humanities, whatever your area of study, you can fit in into digital humanities. Okay, so you, you begin to open your mind and see that, look, what we are talking about is something that will benefit you. Whatever your background, philosophy, history, music, um, any, any area of uh, 
humanities or liberal science. Digital humanities actually has the answer to uh, some of the challenges we're facing. Now, I, I won't spend most time again trying to talk about, uh, describe or define digital humanities. Uh, I'm sure that the slide will be, will be shared later. Um, it began with, you know, humanity computing, and then gradually it, it moved, to, and then we are becoming um, um, wider. The, the field is becoming broader, and then new technologies have been applied, new tools have been developed, um, and these actually are helping to transform uh, our research and um, our pedagogy in, in the humanities. Well, of course, you know, as far back as 1940, you can, you can trace the history of digital humanities. Um, uh, a few things that others have done in the past, um, the literature is available. Um, so you, you can you begin to see that this, this field started gradually and then it has become what it is today. Um, again, as I said, it covers history, literature, and, and on and on. It also includes one, one, thing, one thing that is important I need to mention is that it includes the development and application, okay? Development and application of you know, um, these technologies, um, new technology that we can, we can, we can apply, uh, development of software, um, repository, and, and, and several other related uh, area of research. We contend that the best work in the humanities, um, you know, also deal with um, application approach to, to, to politics, to society, to culture and technology, to ask the important question of our day. Now, one thing that is important in our, in our practice is the fact that whatever we are doing must actually uh, benefit society. We must be able to begin to think that beyond what we are doing in the field or in our offices, in our laboratory, how do all these benefit our society? Very, very important. Um, research in digital humanities, um, you have a variety of areas that you can actually explore uh, as digital humanists. Uh, but five major areas have been, have, been, have been identified, digital collections, archiving and text coding, reading and analyzing electronic text, geospatial and critical discursive mapping techniques, big data, social computing, crowdsourcing, and on, 3D, massive visualization environment, and other areas that actually related to that. Again, of course, you, you remember Robert Obusa, you remember the, the, the beginning of, of digital humanities. Uh, I will not waste, waste much time on that. Uh, but the point is that we are beneficiaries of uh, an illustrious pedigree of scholars who have done some work in this area. All we need to do is to begin to build on what they have done and see how we can contextualize that within Africa, okay? Well, of course, phenomenal uh, work is being done over there in the, in, in the North, uh, in the Europe, and, other, and, and even Asia. So the time has come for us in Africa to begin to see how we can also begin to contextualize uh, this project and begin to apply the technology to answer question in our own environment, okay? Solve problems. Um, still background, uh, we'll not waste more time on that. Um, of course, the development of the web, web 2.0, that interactive web actually uh, uh, provided a, a, a very uh, good platform for DH. And then uh, we begin to see how the web can become uh, a tool where we can also interact with, with our, our publics and then how we can project what we are doing. Other approaches attend to the method, platform, and tools that animate the current field and investigate the origins, such as writing studies and on and on. Robert Robot Robot 2016, writing on, writing on DH and digital history, note that we should be better we should be better served by reimagining these humanities, not as, as not a single all-encompassing text, text, but as a house with many rooms. And that's very profound for me. So anywhere you are coming from, you see that you are relevant. You can, you can actually 
create your own space within the within the larger space. So we have different spaces for disciplines that are not silos, but entry point and conduits to central places where those from different disciplines working with particular tools and media can gather. I'm sure if I ask you now, uh, for those of us online or listening, I'm sure that we are from different backgrounds. And then DH is bringing us together. Is it that, that, that's very interesting? So we, we can come together from different disciplines, and then we can begin to see how we can work together and improve our society. Okay, see background uh, on um, on on DH. Now hockey concludes if one humanity computer activity is to be highlighted above all others, in my view, it must be the TIA text and coding initiative and its contribution to markup language. The overarching theme of this narrative is text. And that's why you are going to find out that most of, most, most of the uh, uh, preliminary work uh, in DH, or what many of us are still doing now, has to do with text, okay? Analyzing text, looking at language, how can we improve that? And how can we apply technology to some of these things? So it's very relevant. And then how we must be able to continue to improve on what uh, we have. It's a contested field, okay? Yeah, scholars are, are still arguing back and forth. What is digital humanities, okay? And different perspectives are actually being provided to describe and define uh, digital humanities, okay? Now, look at the second point here, that despite the disagreement and debate, experts believe that with regular training, and that's one of the things we are doing here in Lagos, we believe that we must first of all create awareness, train people so that when they become familiar with, with the principle and practice of DH, and then they can go ahead and begin to apply the tools, okay? So theory tools, techniques and tools that humani digital humanitarians can employ, okay? The, the summer school that we, we, we have been running for, for the third time now, it was established to give participants the capacity to study to interpret and to present a range of social data, cultural material and practices, to develop practical and reflective understandings of software and digital devices and explore ways to collaborate and contribute to scholarly communities and public discourse. I mean, if you, find, if you look at most summer school, you are going to find that principles on the guard, the activities, the motivation for setting up summer school. So it's to, to, to train people, to give them, to enhance their capacity and to build them up. Um, let me go, let me jump this. Now, basically, DH will offer skills, tools, and opportunity to our research engagement and make our results more scientific, more objective, more impactful. I, I, will, I will just give a little, a bit, um, a little illustration uh, down there uh, to show how uh, applying data tools can actually enhance and objectify uh, our research. Uh, available computer software, if properly utilized, will reduce stress, will reduce subjectivity. You know, most of our work in, in, in the humanities has to do with intuition, okay? You have to interpret based on your own understanding of the text and the cultural material, okay? And therefore, there's a possibility of, I mean, of course, making some mistakes, uh, being subjective, Okay, being, being um, too narrow in analysis, but with the application of, of digital technology, it can become more, more objective. Uh, what can be, can be open? People can look at it and they look at the tools we have used and they can monitor what actually we are arriving at. So it makes our work more objective um, uh, by, by exploring and, and deploying those tools. Now, I'm sure many of all you are familiar with Clarin. Clarin, um, uh, the it's a very big, big project in the, in, in, in in Europe, and then uh, there are tools that they are developing and they are they are making available. Uh, so you find how to prepare your data in much in a machine readable format, how to create your own, your own corpus, uh, data mining, digital storytelling, computer mediated communication, data visualization. These are different areas of the DH project that you can, you can work on as a new entrant or as, a, as scholars in DH. And we can, we can actually apply that to explore data in Africa. 
Now, stylometry is, is a very popular area of study in DH. Um, and you can, you can look at that and then uh, look at literary text and then apply um, technologies to look at, okay, number of words, frequency counts, and how those things inform the theme of the novel or the, or, or the play or whatever it is. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show a bit of that uh, later on uh, as, I, as, I, uh, as, I, as I share with you, um, you know, how I apply that to analyzing um, uh, Chino Achebe's Things Fall Apart and so many of what you are familiar with Things Fall Apart. Uh, one of the strengths of DH2 is that they can be utilized for a range of analytical procedures in language and literature. These tools enable researchers to search identify, discuss patterns in large data empirically and objectively. Those are the benefits of applying these tools. That large data, you can, you, you may not be ordinary, ordinary you, you cannot, I mean, um, study or analyze manually with, this, with, the, with the help of uh, technology or uh, equipment, you can actually analyze that within a very short time make data to become more concrete and representative of reality, make analysis more exciting and research results more explanatory. Now, let me now come back home um, and then begin to talk on practical things. You know, I mentioned principles, uh, practice and projects. Now, in, in 2015, we started the uh, initiative in Lagos. And then uh, after I returned from the Humboldt, Humboldt uh, program, and then we started our initiative and gradually we've been able to uh, develop a full-fledged center now, a uh, center for digital analysis in Lego. Uh, that's, that's our website. You can actually visit us and then drop a comment for us and how we can improve. We welcome your idea. Thank you so much. So please visit our website and leave a message for us and uh, let us know how we can improve. Now in 2019, uh, I'm sure a number of my colleagues are there uh, we were part of um, a set of scholars invited to uh, to Lawrence in um, in Leiden, University of Leiden, and then we organized this first digital humanity workshop. Um, and then uh, it was a wonderful time uh, in, in 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 Leiden. And then after that, we moved to uh, Utrecht for the conference, and we had we had quite quite a, a productive and enriching time. Uh, I'm sure John may be there, uh, listen to me, and uh, uh, a number of other scholars that we were together over there in 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 in, in the Netherlands. Now, one outcome of one one of the outcomes of that of that um, uh, meeting was that we we've been able to set up <clears throat> African Afri African network now in GH. So, um, information we we will pass on to you. You can you can join us uh, to be part of that community of African scholars in the age. Now, in the last few years, we, we've been involved in some projects in Nigeria, okay? Um, uh, in 2019, we, we won the uh, National Research Fund um, by Tet Fund, and then we are currently uh, looking at the use of technology in Nigerian political uh, practices, uh, 2015 and 2019. So we're trying to build, um, uh, like the uh, repository of online texts on Nigerian politics. We are trying to see how technology has improved political practice, democratic practice in Nigeria. We are trying to provide material that policymakers can use to improve um, the organization, to improve the credibility of our election. Okay, so that's it. That one of the objectives of of, of our of our research and. Uh, we, are, we are making progress. We have a website for that project, and then um, you can always you always visit us. Number two, um, for the past two uh, two uh, edition of our summer school in Lagos, uh, we've been able to actually um, get uh, Volkswagen Foundation to support us in 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 funding the the program the program. Uh, basically, uh, for now, that research grant is, is focusing on sub-Sahara Africa. So I know that because uh, South Africa, they have, a, they have a lot of money. So, <laughs> so but for us, it's, it's sub-Sahara Africa. So they are trying to support us and see 
how we can how we can improve and then expand the, the scope of DH in sub-Saharan Africa. And it's been a wonderful time. Uh, 2018, we had over 100 participants. Uh, and then oh, just last week, we had a third one. Uh, as I said earlier on, people came from, uh, scholars came from Mali, from Senegal, from Cameroon, from Ghana, from Togo, um, from Mali, and then, of course, from Nigeria. So it was, it was quite an enriching time. And then again, I must thank Meno. Meno was one of our facilitators during the program and was able to share with us uh, the great work that has been done in Sardilla and in South Africa. Now, let me now look at some very practical uh, areas, practical areas of uh, application of these tools uh, for, for our research in DH. Now, <clears throat> a number of us may be familiar with Sketch Engine. Sketch Engine is a digital tool that you can apply for a range of <clears throat> for a range of DH projects. It can help you to build your corpus. It can help you to develop and build your repository. It can help you to be able to analyze, do data mining, and several other. It's a corpus manager and analysis software. Its purpose is to enable people studying language behavior, language behavior and researchers in corpus linguistics, translators or language learners to search large text collections according to complex and linguistically motivated queries. So you query the, the software, you ask the software to do something for you. Uh, once you program your, uh, your input there and then you see uh, the, the software actually generating the results for you. Now, I, I have here uh, a couple of uh, images. Uh, to uh, authenticate the project we are doing in Lagos. Um, this is our project team on field work, uh, trying to gather data on political practice in Nigeria, especially the use of electronic electronic uh, technologies uh, or new technologies. Okay, and here you have uh, uh, just truly trying to also interview uh, somebody um, and then trying to gather data um, as a result of that. Okay, see the same image. And then okay, now this is our this our center, this is the inner, the inner part of our center, the, the work, the workstation in our center. And then you see some of our research members of the research team actually working on the project. Uh, okay, that's another image from our center uh, at work. Okay. Um, now here you have uh, the the picture, the image coming from the third Lagos uh, Summer School of Digital Humanities. As I mentioned earlier on, we have uh, six countries in, in Sub-Saharan Africa present. And then of course, um, many of the other scholars, they are from Nigeria, different universities from different parts of Africa, of Nigeria. So we are, were there for, for one week, uh, trying to learn, trying to explore, trying to develop projects. Uh, and it's, it's very, very huge, uh, huge program. Uh, and it's been a success. If you if you read the feedback, uh, you'll be you'll be you'll be so humbled. It's been quite quite uh, uh, productive. Uh, another image from there. Now I want to now show the use of digital tools uh, in DH. Now here you have things fall apart, and then for many of you, one thing you know about things fall apart is a clash of cultures. Okay, so assuming you have this kind of project and you want to identify, you want to explore the theme class of culture in a literary text. How can you go about that? Okay. So here we are looking at the manifestation of class of culture in, in, the, in the novel. And then from the study now, I've been able to come up with this. We have internal conflicts within Okonkwo, external conflicts, communal conflicts, national conflicts. Uh, so we created a self-collected corpus type to corpus of Nigerian literary discourse. It involves it involved transforming the electronic copy of Ashebe's Things Fall Apart into a TXT file. A close reading of the text was done to gain additional insight for qualitative analysis. Okay, we use salometric analysis or computational salometry to actually uh, explore, uh, explore what we are looking for in the text. Okay, so we have insights of culture beer, number of mentions, word clouds, concordancing, keyword and content analysis. These are some of the things that we're able to use to be able to come up with a result of class of cultures in, in, uh, in things fall apart. 
And then, of course, we use Sketch Engine to web project uh, to have the relevant online information from critical writings on these smaller parts. The place of concord and clash of culture are the central thematic preoccupations. The digital mapping yielded some interesting information about the thematic preoccupation of the of the text and the character of Okonkwo. Now you have you have that that statistic, statistic there, okay? Uh, the chapter where you have Okonkwo mentioned without reading the text, using the the software, you come up with this with a figure, and that can give you information of okay. In what chapter do you have a concord that's mentioned more than all other chapters? And then why? So those are questions you can ask when you explore that. Here you have the use of Boyan tools. I know many of you are familiar with Boyan tools. And then you can see what cloud, you can see Cyrus, you can see, um, you know, uh, monitoring the trend there. Uh, and then you can come up with, you can easily analyze what you are looking for. Now, of course, you, you know that the bigger the, the word in what cloud, it shows the number of mention of that particular that particular word. Okay. Now, just looking at this alone, you can see Okonkwo popping up as a central character. So, by looking at this, by doing this, you understand that the book is centrally focused on Okonkwo. Not only that, you see man and men. Okay. That tells you that the society is patriarchal. So, you have more, more mention of men and man in that text more than women. Okay, so that, that gives you some idea of what the author is trying to say, the kind of society that the, the author is trying to present. Okay, another, another tool that you can use um, uh, that can also help you to generate uh, information that you need in any text. And then, of course, this another one that can help you to generate uh, this use of Cyrus uh, that can help you to generate information about, about the text. Okay, this tag crowd, another, another DH tool. That you, so you have several several digital tools that you can use to do your work, okay? And that can help you to generate information and you cannot provide qualitative analysis of, of, your, of, your, of, your, um, of, your, of your project. Now, here you have uh, the use of Antcom. I'm sure many of you, you will be familiar with Antcom, okay? Antcom just helps you to, can, can help you to analyze Keyword in context analysis. Now, what do I mean by that? Look at this. Look at this frame, and then you see Okonkwo as the as the highlighted word there. Now, by by looking at this very chapter one, you can see Okonkwo. You can see the context in which Okonkwo is mentioned, and by clicking on it, it takes you directly to where um, the 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 information is, and you can get information and analyze that. Okay. Now, look at the first one. Okonkwo was well known throughout the night village. Look at the one I highlighted. They don't need the time Okonkwo's fame had grown like a bushfire. Look at the next one. Anyone that then that his son Okonkwo was ashamed of him, talking about the father of Okonkwo. Okonkwo was clearly cut out for great things. Look at this next one. Okonkwo ruled his household with a heavy hand. So already you're having an idea of what the character of Okonkwo. Now, look at the next one. Perhaps Oko, down in his heart, Okonkwo's fear was greater than this. So by using digital tools, you, you, are, you simplify your project, uh, you objectify your project, and you come up with results that are verifiable, okay, that are objective. And you can actually begin to analyze uh, qualitatively. Uh, the same thing you have here. Um, now, this is, a, this is a sample of the use of sketch engine, okay? So you have this uh, also giving you an idea uh, a number of measure frequency. So you have here, you have under the single word, you have a Okonkwo uh, having the score 4,001.48.5, okay? Measure 1,498 times, and then re reference uh, frequency, you have it there. And then if you go to the other side, where you have multi word, okay? So apart from the hustle, the next one you see, white, ma white, white man, okay? That tells you that in that novel, you are going to encounter white man, mentioned several times and that's important because that set up the clash of culture in that novel you see white person and then and on and on i generated this from from web on critical writing on 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 on, on things fall apart okay then again you can also come up with this and then from this you can build your corpus on literary text or whatever you are looking at now sketch engine also serves as a web crawler helping to harvest query text 
keywords, concept from the various online platforms and build your own corpus. Okay, you can, you can use that crowd, keyhole, top C servers, and so on. Now from, from that study, we can come up with some of these results. Civilization, education, political culture, economic culture, religious culture, social cultures, global versus national or local ego culture, private versus public culture, foreign versus local culture, modern versus ancient culture, tradition versus modernity, change versus tradition. Now, I was able to come up with because of the, of the uh, support I received from the, from, the, from the technology. Okay, again, if I want to query Christian in that text, it gives you this. And then you see Christian, the church, and, and on the white man. Um, so you see how they call the goddess. You see how they call in context and how they provide information that illuminates the, the concern, the theme of the text. Okay. And then you have this, this different uh, class of cultures coming up from that study. Now, I, I will quickly move uh, to uh, the other. Um, the other projects um, which, which are, we have been working on on political discourse. Um, now, when we talk about DH2s, what do they, what they help us to do? Number one, DH2s enable us to track conversation, analyze key events, and monitor other characters, even that are receiving more attention in the text. The analytics reveals quantitative information about the data that suggests the prominence and intensity of discursive issues and interaction around the key subject area. This exploration shows um, the significance of these issues and themes in the novel within the local and global context, and perhaps their social relevance and wider cultural implication. Now, here we have uh, some of the things we have been doing in terms of the uh, digital political discourse in Nigeria. Now, this is the application of another tool uh, to actually uh, study uh, political campaign in Nigeria. And then you have, uh, for those of you uh, you are familiar, this 2015 election. And if you're familiar with, um, with that, uh, that election, you will see the mention of APC, PDP, APC rally, uh, GEG -G will win. That, that's good luck, Jonathan will win. GEG 2015, good luck, Jonathan. And you see the mention uh, by using this tool. You're able to come up with uh, some keywords that you can now pick and then analyze your text. Okay, again, you have, um, you have this mention, you have uh, the use of sketch engine again for that project. Uh, and it, it, we're able to get this uh, keyword mentioned during that period. Okay. And then we can now begin to analyze uh, this word uh, within the context of that election or electoral practice. The same thing, another, another, another tool that you can use to come up with um, information that you need. This uh, data from the Facebook page of uh, Good Luck, Billy Jonathan. Now, this project we are talking about, uh, the comedy, uh, we are concerned about to, to collect, to collate and create and construct and communicate a corpus of new media discourse in Nigeria. Okay, we are building a corpus of over 1 million world tokens of online conversation of politics and governance in Nigeria. That's for between 2011 and 20, that's at that time. Okay, uh, we build uh, a user interface web-based corpus. We create open access platform that scholar researchers and policymakers can consult for historical data on the events and the information on trends, opinion, and debates on politics and governance in Nigeria. Actually, this project can also help to monitor the growth and development of democracy in Nigeria. It can help us to identify social cultural factors that impact politics and democracy in Nigeria. Uh, I believe um, if we're able to uh, come up with the result of that, I'm sure that we are going to contribute uh, greatly to improving political practice in Nigeria. So I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and then, so let's get into the into, into question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I really, really like this uh, presentation. It gives a nice overview of the history and also some practical, practical examples of the, the work you're doing. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, I do see in the chat that there are a few questions. Um, so if, if others have questions, please just put them in the chat and then we can we can discuss them there. Uh, so the first one is uh, I'm in the field of uh, academic literacy and I would like to know how one can develop DH projects on academic writing, particularly first year students academic writing. I'm not sure if you have any, any ideas on this. 
Okay, okay. That, that's, that's a very good question, academic writing. I know uh, a number of our colleagues, uh, especially in Cameroon, have been working on academic writing. And yeah, it depends on the, the, the area you are looking at. Uh, academic writing, first year students uh, in the humanities or in the sciences or in engineering. So you need to identify the focus of uh, your, your subject area or your subject, the, the, what, who you want to look at or what you want to look at. Uh, then you can you can develop your self corpus by collecting those uh, those projects or writing, and then you build your corpus, and then from there you can begin to work on on the on the on the corpus. So it's a relevant area of study in GH. Uh, that means you have to digitize uh, those writing. I mean you collect the, the hard copy or whatever you or the electronic copy, and then you transform them into TXT file. You can now upload on your on your on your repository. And then it depends on what exactly you want to look at. You want to look at pattern of the use of particular word. You want to look at um, um, uh, meaning generation. You want to look at um, uh, syntactic structure and how those inform uh, the, uh, the pattern of discourse in academic writing. So it's a very good area you can work on. And a few people are already working on them. I'm sure that. Um, you can actually do something very significant uh, doing that project. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that answers the question. Uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of uh, variables that can uh, can influence this. There was uh, a follow-up question, how uh, someone can apply for research funding from Sudilar. Uh, okay, so I think that's more for me to, to yeah, answer. That's, that's for you. <laughs> that's for uh, you. So, <laughs> Interested people can take a look at uh, our website. Uh, let me put that quickly in the chat uh, and uh, find more information there. And if um, uh, people are interested, they can always contact uh, contact us at Sadler for uh, specific questions on that. Um, Nani Makatsu has a question. Uh, does the work of the, so that is more <laughs> relevant to you. Does the work of the center extends to Nigerian indigenous languages? And if so, what are the current DH developments? I think that's a very interesting question. Very interesting question. Very, very interesting question. Yeah, well, for now, we we are yet to get into the indigenous languages um, uh, project, but there is an institute uh, very close to us, uh, Institute of African and Diaspora Studies, uh, who also got some funding from Germany to do some projects. So they are, they are working um, in that area. So we don't want to duplicate uh, what they are doing. So they are working, looking at some uh, very uh, basic uh, cultural issues, uh, local languages, and so on and so forth. So they are working on that. Uh, we, are not, we are not into that as at now. Uh, with time, we can begin to work together and see how, of course, let me also mention that uh, the center is also part of the uh, the project going on there from University of Byron, uh, the multiple uh, center of excel excellence, because I was part of the team that actually wrote the proposal for the for the funding. Uh, so uh, I'm looking at their digital research environment issues. So when they have any challenge, when they have question, they get in touch with me, and then we see how we can help them to solve the problem. And then of course collect their data, digitize them, and then put them uh, in a repository. So if if they don't have enough space. So that's what we are doing as at now. We are not into indigenous languages, but I can actually provide the link or contact for those who want to actually get information from Institute of African and Diaspora Studies, very close to our own center. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Now there's another interesting question from uh, Omin Klaasens. I'm not sure if my research interest is applicable to the field of digital humanities. I've joined to try and find out. I'm in social work and interested uh, to research finding how digital technologies can help social workers to better human connection. So listening to the speaker, I'm not sure if social work uh, in the field of humanities is included in digital humanities. I would be interested to have a conversation well, me, to better see, find, uh, understand. Yeah, Menno, the point is that um, digital humanities actually is not confined to the field of humanities. Uh, those in social sciences are also getting involved. In fact, they are developing another area now. Um, they call it digital social sciences. Uh, so social work is, is relevant. Um, you can apply uh, data tools to whatever you do, whether you are in social sciences or you are in the humanities. So it's still relevant. Uh, 
but also it depends on the kind of work you are looking at. For instance, if you are looking at uh, labor relations, if you are looking at, for instance, um, you are trying to uh, to map the behavior of maybe healthcare providers during the COVID-19. Okay, so you can actually collect data on uh, the responses, the activities of uh, healthcare providers during uh, COVID-19 in your country or anywhere. And then you look at that and then you can begin to see by looking at words, you can, you can also identify sentiment analysis, their, re their, their reaction. And we have tools that, that can actually help you to, to actually monitor sentiment analysis, behavior of people. Okay, if you are familiar with uh, R Studio, uh, there are some so there are some uh, tools or, or part of that that can help you to actually do sentiment analysis. So it's still relevant to social work. Um, it depends on how you're able to look at the, the appropriate tools that can look at that can help you to analyze your data. So you collect your data phase, uh, ask yourself what kind of project you want to look at, what are you looking for, what are you trying to identify, and then. Now go and look for the tools that can help you to actually uh, do that online or do that uh, digitally. So, and of course, the, the benefit of that is that by the time you finish your project, it's very objective. People can, can look at your methodology, look at your technique, and they can see your outcome. And that helps them to understand, yes, that's true. If you look at this, this pattern, this pattern, then you can come up with this. So I, I think it's irrelevant. Yeah, so those in social sciences, you can actually get involved in digital humanities. Yes, please. Okay, wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. So I, I completely agree. It's, uh, and I think this is also what you highlighted in the presentation. It's very difficult to get a uh, to get to a good definition of what digital humanities now really yeah. is. That's uh, awesome, yeah. And yeah, and I, I'm, I'm personally actually happy that we don't have a good definition because it allows this flexibility to uh, mm -hmm. to That's work. Nice. Uh, I, I don't see any other questions on the chat. I mean, I've got a few questions as well, and I, I, I really enjoy uh, discussing things with you. <laughs> we can talk for hours. Uh, so if there are yeah, any more can. questions or follow-up <laughs> questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, I actually have one, 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 one question uh, that I, I, I was really wondering about. So you, I really like that, that research you're doing with the things falling apart uh, analysis, mm -hmm. and I think the what, what what I see as a, a difficulty, and I'd really like to hear how you try to solve this, is how do you get from the computational results? So I feel comfortable personally with doing the computational analyses, but then you get the results and you actually want to get to a certain interpretation. And I think this is a step that really re requires the human to, it, it's not just applying a tool and, I, and you're ready. Totally. So how do you I do that? You. How do you get from the computational results to a, a practical uh, okay. interpretation? Oh, thank you very much for that question. Now, of course, again, I, I mentioned earlier on that uh, for us in the humanities, you know, we, we, we rely on our intuition to analyze uh, some of the literary texts. Your, your understanding of the cultural environment, your understanding of the context uh, will help you to actually uh, uh, come up with results. Once you see the quantitative information, and then you're able to now apply your qualitative uh, approach to analyze the text. Now, let me take, for example, you look at um, the, the frequency of the mention of white men in that novel, okay? And then if you click, uh, it's because it's not online, if you click uh, the mention of white men or the mention of uh, Okonkwo, you will discover that it will take you to the, to the very heart of the text. And then you can read around it. So it requires close reading. Because you have to read the text, you have to understand the context, so that when you look at the, uh, the quantitative information, the statistics, uh, you're able to easily apply that to your understanding of the context, of the culture, of the novel. So that, that's how to just, to just come up with that. And in fact, the point is that it, it, it expands your understanding of, of the text, because now you can see, okay, um, white men or goddess is, is of course in this in this in this note in this part in this part, and then you you have to read the word around the keyword to understand the meaning. You must read other words left and right. If you look at the frame, you will see that we have some words left and right. So you have to read everything around the word to be able to get uh, to understand the context and the meaning 
of, 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 of what you are trying to analyze or come up with. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Okay, thank you. So this is really, uh, what, what you're saying is really a combination of a, a distant reading first using the tools and then a close yeah. reading of uh, exactly. done by, by people. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. No, great, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any other more questions. I don't see anything on the chat yet. So we're also getting close to the uh, to 11 o'clock. So if there is no more, if there are no more questions, then I would like to thank you again, uh, Poftanda. I really appreciate the, the, the um, uh, appreciate your presentation. Uh, I think it gives a wonderful uh, insight in I think the the current situation in in um, of digital humanities in Africa, and I really like the uh, the practical. Uh, projects that you described as well. I think that's a very interesting insight. So thank you very much for this presentation. Thank um, you very much. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> but let me no, let me uh, mention that yeah, we must be ready for challenges. Uh, so we must we must not shy away from the challenges, challenges of uh, electricity, challenges of internet. Uh, those are challenges, but we must make up our mind to overcome the challenges so that we can we can make progress. Thank you very much. I, I fully agree. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.